Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Algebra 1 class. All right, guys, last week we're going to be wrapping up radicals. Uh, we learned how to work with square roots last week. We learned how to add, subtract, multiply, divide them. We learned how to rationalize a denominator. We learned how to solve equations with square roots. Those, the good news is that those same concepts extend to all radicals. Today we'll be learning how to find what's called the nth root of a number. When I tell you that a to the n power equals b, with a and b real numbers and n is the positive integer, then a is the nth root of b. What I mean is this. For example, if I have 2 to the third power, 2 to the third power is 8. The third or the cube root of 8 equals 2. Okay? What's happening here? If you remember that the index of a radical tells you how many sets I'm looking for of a particular number before I can take that number out of the radical. Okay? If n is odd, the root is odd, there is one real nth root of b, denoted by the radical form, the nth root of b. If n is odd, if you have an odd index, the answer could be positive or negative. There are no restrictions there. Now, if n is even, there's a little bit of a difference here. When b is positive, the radicand is positive, in an even root, there are two real nth roots for that value, b. The positive or principal root is just the nth root of b. The negative root is the negative nth root of b. But when b is negative in an even root, an even index, there are no real even roots of b. You cannot have that. When b is negative, there are only real roots for odd indexes. You can use a radical sign to indicate the root, which we know already, and the number under the sign is the radicand, which we know already, and the index gives you the root, which hopefully you know already. The index is the number that shows up here. The radicand is what's inside the radical. And the radical sign itself is still just called a radical sign. If there is no index, we worked with this last week, then it is a square root. That means the index is 2. Now, if n, the, the index, is greater than or equal to 2, and even, then a and b must be greater than or equal to 0. If n is greater than or equal to 3 and odd, then a and b can be any real number. What do I mean by that? If I have the fourth root of negative 16, that's going to be no real number. Because what number times itself can be multiplied four times and give me a negative answer? None. None. Because every pair of negatives multiplied together gives me a positive. So negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, that's four twos. Four negative twos actually is 16, not negative 16. So if I have an even root, even, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and the radicand, the inside number, is a negative, it's no real number. However, if I have an odd root, for example, cube root of negative 2, right off the bat, whenever you have an odd index, what I like to do to, co to, to eliminate confusion, this negative goes on the outside immediately. 
So now I have the negative of cube root of 8. Now I can break this down. This is 2 times 4, 2 times 2, and I'm looking for sets of 3. So a 2, a 2, and a 2 comes out as a 2, so my answer would be negative 2. Because negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. So we're dealing with the same exact concept, except if you have an even root, the radicand must be positive. If you have an odd root, the radicand can be negative. And you still have to break it down. And you still have to take out sets of numbers. How many do I take out, Mr. Morrow? It depends on the index. If my index is 5, I need a set of 5 numbers to pull one out. If my index is 4, I need a set of 4 of the same number to pull one out. If my index is blank, it's a 2, I need sets of 2 to pull one of those values out. If my index is, is, is 5, I need sets of 5 of one number to pull it out. You guys with me here? Okay. When you are finding real roots of a number, use the index to determine how many values are needed to pull out one of that value. For example, 64. How can we break down 64? Okay, let's do that. 8 times 8. Okay, now what? Okay, 4 times 2. And that breaks out to a 2 times 2, right? And that's 2 times 4, which breaks down to a 2 times 2. I'm looking for sets of how many numbers to pull one value out. Okay, I'm looking for sets of 3. So a 2 and a 2 and a 2 comes out as a 2 times. A 2 and a 2 and a 2 comes out as a 2. So 4 is my answer. And I can prove that. 4 times 4 is 16. And 16 times 4 is 64. Does that make sense? You sure? Okay. So, what are the real cube roots of point zero zero eight? If I had the cube root of this, I want to break this down. What do I break this down into? No. Point zero zero four times point zero zero two is point zero 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 eight. How about this? How about 2 times 0 0.004? Right? Okay. So we got that. And then this 0 0.04 would break up into 2 and 0 0.002. Okay. And then what would this 0 0.002 break up as? 2 and 0 0 0.001. Very good. So I need sets of 3 here, right? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I should not have circled the 0 0.002. I apologize. My bad. My bad. Okay. So I have a 2, a 2, and a 2 that comes out as a 2, correct? However, this point zero zero 0.001 is also a perfect cube. How do I break down point zero zero 0.001 into a perfect cube? What's point 0.1 times point 0.1 times point 0.1? Point zero zero 0.001. So I take out a point zero zero 0.001 as a point 0.1, so 2 times point 0.1 gives me point uh, ah, point two and what's point two times point two point zero four times point two point zero zero eight so whenever you're looking for a cube root or any root for that matter you have to ask yourself what number times itself that many times gives me 
the inside radical. So 0 0.008, the cube root of that would be 0 0.2. What would the cube root of negative 1,000 be? First of all, what did I tell you? When you have a negative inside the cube root, it comes out as a negative. So it'd be 10. Very good, negative 10. Because 10 times 10 is 100. 10, 100 times 10 is 1,000. There's three tens. You're done. How about the cube root of 1 27th? What times what times what equals 27? 3. So this would be 1 third. So cube roots. So think about fourth roots. What's the fourth root of 1? No, if it was 0.1, it'd be 0.0001. It's just 1. 1 times itself, 4 times is 1. Okay? What's the fourth root of this guy? No, not 0.1. It'd be negative 0.1. Oh, wait a second. It's fourth root. So there'd be no real solution. Good, good catch. No real number. What about 1681st? What times what? Four times times itself four times gives you 16. Two. What times itself four times gives me 81? Three. Very good. Very good. Sir. You got lucky then in that one. Wait, 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 how did you simplify it to get two-thirds? That's impossible. That's impossible. You can't simplify that because nothing goes into 16 and 81. Yes, sir. Okay, it's not four. It's the fourth root of 16. Two times two times two times two is 16. And then three times three is nine times three is 27 times three is 81. The fourth root... We're looking for what number times itself four times gives me this value. Okay? So, what's the cube root of 8? How about the square root of 0 0.04? Uh, two. 0 0.2. Very good. How about the fourth root of negative 1? No real number. How about the square root of negative 2 squared. No, in this case, no. In this case, doesn't the square root cancel out the power of 2? So it would just equal negative 2 in that case. What's the cube root of negative 27? It's not 3. It's negative 3. Very good. Remember, when you have an odd root and it's negative, pull out the negative from the beginning. What's the fourth root of negative 8? No real number. Very good. Very good. Now, here's the part that gets a lot of people confused, so please pay attention. For any real number, A, the nth root of A to the n power will equal A if n is odd. It will equal the absolute value of A if n is even. What is this saying? In other words, when you take out an odd exponent from an even root, it must be an absolute value. When you take out an odd exponent from an even root, it must be an absolute value. When you take out an odd exponent from an even root, it must be an absolute value. Let's explain. What's the square root of 16x to the to the eighth? 4x to the fourth. Okay. Did I take out any odd exponents? Really? I didn't? Isn't there an invisible one here in front of the four? Isn't that an odd exponent? So this should really have equaled absolute value of 4x to the 4th. How about here for b? 
What's the cube root of a to the six, a to the ninth? How many times does three go into six? Okay, a squared b cubed. However, do I have to put anything into uh, absolute value here? No, because you have an odd index. How about here, though? This would be x to the second, y cubed, but that has to be an absolute value. You will be wrong if you just put y cubed. Because whenever you take out an odd exponent from an even root, it must be an absolute value. There's no choice. When it's an odd root, you don't have to sweat it. But when it's an even root, if you take out um, 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 an odd exponent from an even root, it must be an absolute value. How about this bad boy for D? What's the cube root of negative 2 thirds to the 6th power a 12 b to the 15th? First of all, it's negative, so that means it's going to be negative. How many times does 3 go into 6? So that's 2 thirds squared a to the and b to the. So my answer here would be negative. 4 ninths, a to the 4th, b to the 5th. Does everyone see that, gentlemen? Are you sure, gentlemen? Okay. How about this? Square root of 81x to the 4th. 9x squared. Technically, 9 should be an absolute value. It's really more important for variables more than anything else. That's where it's really applied. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. D. Yes, that is the answer, sir. No, that would not be an absolute value because I came out of an odd index. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now, uh, F, the fourth root of x to the 12th, y to the 16th. What would that be? x cubed, y to the 4th. That would be half wrong. It's absolute value of x cubed, y to the 4th. Whenever I take out an odd exponent, from an even root, I must have it in absolute value. Does that make sense, boys? Alrighty. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and I hope you learned a lot. Bye-bye.